it's 11 p.m. So hi, my name's Aaron, welcome to a new video. If you're new, please make sure to leave a like and subscribe. You can also follow me on Instagram with the link in the description. Red Bull is so good. <laughs> I shouldn't be having it at 11 p.m., but it's too late now, I opened it. So a few days ago, I posted on my Instagram story. I explained that I wanted to make a video talking about my experience with piercings and body modifications so far. And if anyone had any questions or comments, they could respond to the post and then I'm adding them in this video. Yeah, it's pretty much a Q&A. <laughs> For privacy reasons, I've blocked out everyone's names. So without further ado, let's just start answering some questions. The first question is, when was your first piercing? I got my first piercing on my 10th birthday, and my parents actually paid for it. Unfortunately, at the time it was pierced with a gun. Piercing guns are actually quite bad. But I was 10. I was an idiot. I knew absolutely fucking nothing. <laughs> but since then, I have done a lot of research. I now know that getting a piercing done with a needle is a lot better, and that's how I get all of my piercings done now. Do your parents like what you're doing? My parents have adjusted over time and they like how my ears look now, but they're nervous for when I stretch them bigger than this. My parents aren't monsters or anything, I'm not saying like it's bad. They're only saying these things because they love me and they care about me and they want to make sure that I'm healthy and like not doing things to my body that could end in severe damage. That being said, they also understand that I'm an adult and if I want to have piercings then I am allowed to have piercings. Did stretching your septum hurt? This Red Bull's starting to kick in, but I want another sip. <laughs> Did stretching my septum hurt? Yeah, a lot. Like, a lot. In my septum stretching video, you hear me say like, Ow, oh my god, it hurts. You hear me sucking like that for about 20 seconds. But what you didn't see was the four minutes that I cut out when I was just wearing my head off and almost crying, like, I was a mess. So yeah, it did hurt, but that's also not gonna stop me from stretching it again to get to my goal size. Healing process, because I want my helix, but I don't wanna risk infection. So most cartilage piercings anywhere on your ear tend to take around six months to a year, depending on where it is on your ear and depending on how thick that area of cartilage is. For example, Helix is thinner cartilage than conch, so a helix would, for the most part, probably heal a bit quicker than a conch, unless you happen to have some bad luck and maybe you, it gets infected or something. But relating that back to the question in particular, uh, personally my helix took about a year to heal. Unfortunately, it took quite a lot longer to heal than it should have, and that was just because I knocked my ear quite a few times and it put the area under a lot of trauma and it really, really hurt. I also didn't focus on aftercare as much as I should have. Focus on aftercare with a piercing. You're cleaning it maybe once or twice a day. It's going to make the healing process so much better. How many more do you think you'll get? I think this is relating to piercings. At this point, it's hard to say for sure. Like I said in a previous video, I do plan on getting my nostril done, like the side of my nose or possibly even both sides. In terms of my ears, I'm thinking maybe Rook or a Helix or maybe Rook on this side. I don't really know. Nothing is 100% like decided like, yes, this is the piercing that I'm getting. <laughs> Unless you guys want to leave a comment and maybe my next video can be my subscribers pick my new piercing. <laughs> Part of the next question got cut off. I ended up DMing the person and I asked them for the second half of the question for clarity. How do you deal with people who may not agree? For example, my family aren't huge on tattoos and kind of make me feel bad for getting one. As long as you try to talk with your family and they're aware of your future plans, that's the best you can really do. If your family doesn't like your tattoo, it's really none of their business. Your body, your tattoo, your happiness. And if you're happy, that's the most important thing. Last question for today. Any advice for someone who wants to stretch their ears? Be smart, be safe, be sanitized. Using a lubricant on your ears is completely personal preference. Take me for example. I haven't used any oils on my ears or lubricants or anything and all of my stretching processes have been fine because I'm paying attention to what my body is feeling and I'm listening to my body and you should listen to your body as well. If you try to push a taper through and it's hurting a crazy amount, take it out. Also don't use acrylic, apparently that stuff is really bad 
for your body. It's not smooth, there's chemicals in it. It's just all around bad. The best material that I've read that you can use is either steel, wood, or glass. Personally, I've never had any experience with wood or glass stretching jewelry, but maybe I should buy some in the future and try it out. Anyway, that's all the questions I'm going to be answering for today. If you have any more questions, feel free to leave them in the comment section and I might make a part two of this video soon. So yeah, thanks for watching. Please leave a like and subscribe and you can also follow me on Instagram and I hope to see you in another video soon. Bye!